Have you ever struggled to make a decision? Like, should I date this person? Which college should I go to? Should I take this job? Should I switch jobs? Should I go back to school? Buy this house? Should I move? Out of state? Out of the country? Should I marry them? Is now the right time to start a family? Or what do I do with my life? If you're a Christian, you can be crippled with yet another question. Is this God's will for my life? Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17 reads, Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. So what is God's will for your life? All these questions are tough, but there are five steps you can take to find God's will for your life. So in today's video, we will be answering the following question, how do I find God's will for my life? Step number one, read the Bible, focusing on what you know for sure. Sometimes when we struggle with making a decision, we tend to place greater focus on the things we don't know. I don't know if God wants me to go here. I don't know if God wants me to do this. Someone wise once told me, when you are met with something that you don't know, go back to what you do know. So you may have a lot of question marks in your life. Like for example, you may not know who God wants you to marry, but we know God wants you to stay away from sexual immorality and to be pure. 1 Thessalonians 4.3 For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. And you may not know where God wants you to go, but we know God wants you to live a life full of gratitude. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And you may not know what to do, but we know God wants you to do what is good and to be a good example to those around you. 1 Peter 2.15 For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So application. When you are met with a decision and you want to know what God wants, read the Bible and place greater focus on what you know for sure rather than focusing on what you don't know. Know that God is good, holy, and that he loves you. And know that God wants you to be pure and to live with integrity, to be thankful regardless of the situation you find yourself in, and to do what's right so that you can be an example to others. So right now, you may not know all of God's will, but you know part of it. So start there. Step number two, give it to God. So once you focus on what you know for sure, the next step is to dedicate time to actively seek God's will. And if you're serious about this decision you have to make, you must pray, read, fast, and humble yourself. Ezra was a scribe and a teacher of God's word back when the temple was being rebuilt during the times of King Artaxerxes, and he was passionate about God's word. Ezra 7.10 reads that Ezra prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it, and to teach statutes and ordinances in Israel. In Ezra chapter 8 verses 21 and 23 it says, I, Ezra, proclaimed a fast there at the river of Hava, that we might humble ourselves before our God, to seek from him the right way for us, and our little ones, and all our possessions. Verse 23, So we fasted, and entreated our God for this, and he answered our prayer. Note who Ezra was, and what Ezra did. He read God's word diligently, and when he needed help, he humbled himself, he knew he needed God's help, and then he set aside time to pray and chose not to eat for a time. Application: Devote an entire day where you don't eat for a 24-hour period of time and read the Bible and pray when you get hungry. Fasting is when you don't eat anything and only drink water. The reason why we fast is to deny physical desires in order to place greater focus on our relationship with God. So when you get hungry and weak, it's a reminder to rely and depend on God for help. So when you feel tempted to eat, that is the time to pray and to read, to say, God, I'm hungry, but I want to sacrifice food so I can hear from you. Please note that Jesus also fasted and prayed before the beginning of his ministry. Learn from Jesus and Ezra. Give your situation to God fast. And when you fast, supplement it with humility, honest prayer, a focused reading of God's word. And as you do all these things, ask God, what do you want me to do? Step number three, surround yourself with wisdom. When you have an important decision to make, do not isolate yourself. It is important to get the perspectives of multiple wise people around you. Proverbs 11:14 reads, where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, 
there is safety. Note how it says multitude of counselors, not just a couple. So if you're considering marrying someone, maybe you can ask for advice from a couple that's been married for 20 years already. Or if you're considering a career, ask someone who already has experience working in that field. The idea is communicate with people and be open to what they have to say. Now, that doesn't mean you have to take their advice, but if multiple people say the same thing regarding your plans, it might be wise to consider them. And when you ask for advice, try to ask for advice from people older and more mature than you. Maybe ask your parents, a pastor, a former teacher, a coach, a friend's parent that you respect, grandparents, or someone you look up to. So application, talk to wise people who have your best interest in mind and tell them your situation. And once you're done talking, be open to what they have to say. You don't always have to agree with them or take their advice, but you need to see where they're coming from. Gain the wisdom they have to offer you. Step number four, do something. These steps should be done in order. So once you give yourself to a dedicated time of reading and praying, some fasting and asking people for advice, you should consider doing something. Let's look at Moses. When Moses and Israel were escaping from the hands of the Egyptians, the Israelites got stuck in front of the Red Sea. And everyone started panicking and they yelled at Moses saying, we told you to leave us alone and now we're all gonna die. Exodus 14, 13 says, and Moses says to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. Please note what God said to Moses. Why do you cry to me? It's implying here that Moses was crying and praying to God. So was God's response, mm hmm, yes, keep talking. Or was it move? Please note that there is a time to pray and then there's the time to take action. Even Jesus, who was God and a perfect example for us on how to live life, did not pray the entire day. Did Jesus devote his mornings to prayer? Yes. Did he even devote entire nights to prayer? Yes. But he also fed the hungry, cured the lepers, gave sight to the blind, gave hearing to the deaf, gave mobility to the lame, raised disciples, corrected the Pharisees, preached to the lost, set an example to all Christians, and paved the way to eternal life, all fulfilling God's will. A pastor once told me that if you're caught between two choices and you have no idea which one to make, and you're in God's word, in prayer, and you have no habitual sin in your life, he said, do whatever you want. Remember that God gave you your ability to choose. So if you're a Christian and you give yourself to prayer and seek out answers in his word, and you keep yourself set aside for his will, and he still doesn't give you any specific answer, my personal suggestion, do whatever you want. God is not some angry God ready to throw lightning at you the moment you step out of his will. For example, if you're debating what career to pursue, and you decide to pursue law enforcement. But let's say it was actually God's will for you to be a teacher. God isn't going to say, how dare you pursue law enforcement? I called you to teach, now this will teach you. <laughs> no. The analogy I always give is, you can't steer a parked car. In order to be led, you must be moving. So if you are open to God's will, are praying and in God's word, he will lead you no matter what decisions you make. So all of that to say, do something. Step number five, the final step, be open-handed. When looking at your future and when considering what God wants for your life, you can, in your mind, think of all the different roads you can take and see one that you desire the most. You create your own plan, your own expectations of what you want to happen, and then you hold those plans tightly to the point where you refuse to consider the possibility that maybe God wants you to do something else. Here's the thing when it comes to God's plans. Sometimes he gives you a road you didn't consider before. Let's look at Joshua. Joshua was Israel's leader after Moses, and in the beginning of the book, God calls him to be strong, courageous, and to conquer. And then later when Joshua becomes old, God says to him in Joshua 13, seven, now therefore divide this land as an inheritance to the nine tribes and half the tribe of Manasseh. Note how Joshua's job changed. He went from exciting military commander to land distributor. 
Look at what happened to Paul, Silas, and Timothy in Acts 16, 6 to 10. Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So was it a good thing for Paul to try to preach the word in Bithynia? Yes. But did God want them to? No. You see, God had other plans for Paul, and later we see that God opened the door for him to preach in Macedonia. So application, be open-handed with your plans. As you take steps of faith, you may see a future for yourself that you love. And while it's okay to consider that future, don't be so stubborn that you can't let it go. Look at that plan and be willing to change if God calls you to something different. Like Joshua, God may call you to do something different. And like Paul, God may say no to something, not because it isn't good, but because it's not for you. Be open and be willing to submit to God's will. So to review, when you have an important decision to make, remember the five steps. One, focus on what you know for sure. Two, give it to God through fasting, reading, and praying. Three, surround yourself with wisdom. Four, do something, take a step of faith. And five, be open-handed with your plans. Be flexible to what God wants. All of that to say, please let me tell you that God has a wonderful plan for your life. Ephesians 2.10 reads, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Right now, you may not know exactly what God wants for you, but I encourage you to keep seeking God and his will. For depth of joy and profound peace are reserved for those who seek the Lord's will and walk in it. So breathe, don't be anxious, and don't stress. God knows what your future holds, and he's not worried about it. And if he's not worried about it, then why should you worry? So I hope you have a wonderful day today. God bless and never forget, Jesus loves you.